Welcome to Michael Potts F1, everything Formula One, but from a photographer's point of view. Round two of the 2023 Formula One Championship brings us to Jeddah. This is our third visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and this race is going to pose quite a lot of questions for a lot of the teams. Last time out in Bahrain, Max Verstappen and Red Bull were absolutely dominant. They underscored that dominance by winning the race comfortably. Verstappen led from start to finish and he looked completely untouchable. Perez needed to battle a little bit to secure second place. The surprise of the weekend was Fernando Alonso blasting his Aston Martin into third place. Mercedes were very disappointed with their showing. And McLaren are another team on the back foot. They knew they were going to be off the pace before the race started. They plan to bring some large upgrades for round four in Baku. But it's Ferrari that appears to have come away from Bahrain with the most issues. It's a massive contrast in mood from that upbeat launch that they had in Maranello just over a month ago. Charles Leclerc suffered an engine failure. Actually, over the course of the race weekend, he had two issues with the control electronics unit, having to replace both of these. This means that Charles will need to take a 10-place grid penalty for this race. You'd expect the drivers to be a bit downbeat, a bit, a bit depressed going into this race weekend. That was not the case at all. Today, we saw Charles and Carlos painting portraits of each other. Somehow, they managed to turn that into a competition too. Which of these two portraits do you think is the best? And can you identify the driver? Charles also played some ping pong, and again, he was massively competitive with that. This could have been a very good race for the Scuderia. Bahrain was always going to be a track that would favour Red Bull. Jeddah being a bit faster and a bit kinder to the tyres is actually the ideal place for Ferrari to mount a comeback. Now, seeing Charles out of position, all eyes will be on Carlos to see if he can take the fight to Red Bull and Aston Martin. Talking of Aston Martin, there was also quite a lot of attention on the green team this weekend. After taking that shot podium in Bahrain, they've been subject to a lot of jives from mainly Red Bull accusing them of copying their 2022 car. Those sort of comments do make you feel that Red Bull do see them as, as genuine contenders. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Alonso to show that, that Bahrain wasn't just an anomaly and that the team deserves to be in the mix. Lance Stroll has had a few more days to recover from his accident, but I doubt he's 100% yet. Last year, Perez was the fastest car in qualifying, and he only missed out on a podium because of some unfortunate safety car timing. You can expect the Mexican to be strong here again. He's becoming a bit of a street circuit master. Max Verstappen is going to be favourite to win the race. He looked like he just had so much more pace in his pocket in Bahrain. And it's going to take an extra special performance by somebody to deny him of his second consecutive win at the Jeddah circuit. He did miss today's media session through illness, but I think he'll recover in time for the race. The Jeddah street circuit is exceptionally fast. There are lots of corners, most of these are taken at high speed, and the margin for error is tiny. There have been red flags and restarts in both the previous races, and while the organizers tinker with the layout to improve safety, it's still a very dangerous track. In one of the press conferences, George Russell was describing Bahrain as being a bit of an outlier, a bit of an anomaly, and Jeddah will give us a much better idea of how the cars are going to perform throughout the year. The circuit is a lot easier on tires, and it will favor cars that have more of a straight line speed. Photographically speaking, it, it's a little bit of a challenge to photograph this track, there's so many corners and they all look quite similar, it's very hard to get a bit of difference into your imagery. The high protective barriers very close to the track make it very difficult to show context, to include the beauty of the location. This track passes along the Red Sea coast, it weaves its way in and out and around the lagoon, but you really have to go up high to be able to appreciate this. The paddock is starting to feel a little bit more finished. The first two races here had a, had a feeling of a construction site. I think this weekend's race is going to be quite a show. The organizers put on a brilliant barbecue for everyone working in the paddock today. The teams, the hospitality, the media, everyone was there. It was quite a spread and it was lovely to be able to eat outside under the stars, surrounded by so many interesting people. I visited the old town of Jeddah known as Al Balad. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and they're making a lot of effort to restore some of the beautiful old buildings. All these historic houses are actually made from coral bricks. And if you look closely at this one, you can see the imprint of a seashell. You often see these sort of wooden slats between the bricks, and that gives the house a bit of extra stability. Most of this wood comes from sailing ships, because there are very, very few trees here. And wood that's been cured for, for sea vessels 
is a little bit harder and a little bit more, more resilient to weather. This used to be a walled city, and there are still some of the walls remaining, and this beautiful gate. I couldn't find any definitive information showing when Jeddah was first founded, but in 647 it was designated the port city to welcome pilgrims to Mecca. It still forms that function today, now with the addition of a vast international airport. Being a gateway city, it's meant that, that Jeddah's always been a little bit more multicultural and eclectic compared to a lot of the other parts of the country. They wear the title of Jeddah Weird with pride. The country is changing incredibly quickly, and the government does have a lot of very ambitious plans. Whether it's a historical renovation project like this, or their ambitious sporting aspirations, or leading the world in science, technology and innovation, Saudi Arabia want to be in the forefront of all of these fields, and they have the budget to realize these dreams. Thank you for watching my preview of the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. I really hope you've enjoyed it. My predictions for this weekend are going to be Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez, and Carlos Sainz. Please do let me know what you think the podium places will be in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe really helps me bring you more Formula One content throughout the year. So until the race review, goodbye.